Welcome back to our second deep dive into Heaven's Vault. We're headed over to Merzi. I was uh, wandering around last episode seeing if I could go anywhere else by force, but they actually disable the last connective stream that's required to reach any other destination. So unfortunately you can't go anywhere except the one place that the game wants you to go. Um, obviously there is a limit to how free this kind of game can be in terms of where you can go when, because not only is it partially voice acted, but all of the text is scripted. There's no, there's very little generative text. Because of that, there wouldn't really be any easy way for us to, um, to do all of the... There wouldn't be easy, any easy way for that for us to do all of the things that we might um, do. There might there's no way to, for them to write the idea of me just going off and finding, you know, the second to last destination now. Of course, the problem with that is simply that it's it's strangely limiting for a game where you're trying to be free and do as you please. They did it pretty subtly. There's not like it's not gonna it's not gonna derail everything, but there. There is a lot less freedom in this game than you might think, and uh, that's how you do it. You have to give the illusion of freedom without actually um, having any, <laughs> or having very much. You constrain the, uh, the actions so that you can focus on just a few branches that make the most sense. Uh, and I think that that's important. The only other alternative is to make it so that your pieces, your, your various areas that you can go and things you can do uh, somehow reform themselves to the nature of your character and that's what some games do like Skyrim for example if you play Skyrim uh, you can go anywhere and the game will adapt most of the monsters to be your level which is just a basic way to do it but you'd also need to be able to adapt them All to the rivers of the nebula flow to Iox in the end if you tie off your sail Iox is where you'll wash up. It's the heart of the nebula. Or else, it's the gutter. So, as I was saying, you, you can adapt the enemies, but you also need to be able to adapt the storyline, since the character's story is different depending on where they are in, you know, in their story. Um, and the easiest way to do this is usually to include NPCs, where the NPCs have their own story arcs that are separate from the world itself. And then as you progress through the world, they take advantage of things in the world to, uh, to move their arc along. And you can see that in, um, in a lot of the more modern games like Fallout 4, where your, your companions will slowly come to like you more and more or less and less as you progress through the game based on just core interactions, things like if you steal something, do they like that? So they don't care what you're doing, and you can mod in a million new side quests and places that they don't know anything about, and they'll still understand that they are moving forward in in their personal story via how much they like you. Uh, I think that that's possible to take much further. I think that's possible to um, make a lot more flexible and interesting. And uh, that's one of the things I think a context engine can do. The idea of having contexts that are opportunists. And, um, you know, if, if two or three story things are playing at the same time, just find some way to relate them. Or rather, figure out which of your, your characters, which of your team members is, uh, is awake, is, you know, is, is available for this particular system for this particular adventure. We're back on Mayerzy. I don't think we're going to go through the whole game a second time. I've looked into it a little bit, and the second time through really isn't much different. Uh, the only real difference is that I, I could choose a different ending, which I could we do just by rewinding. off the ship and into the mud. Mud covered the ground and rock. And everywhere I looked, things were growing from the mud. And some of those things had legs. 
Uh, the writing in the early game is so much better than in the late game. Which is better than the opposite, I guess, but I would have liked to see good writing throughout. Um, so the endings, there are three. Um, and there's really no difference between them. It's the same way as Mass Effect 3, right? The, the ending you choose doesn't really, doesn't really matter much. Uh, you can argue that there are small differences, but, for example, if you tell the vault to stop harvesting the galaxy, well, the galaxy's still going to run out of air and water and everybody's still going to die. So, um, there's a lot of, you know, once, once the hoppers break down and the water stops being distributed, there's no way for, for the galaxy to continue. So, it's a very bleak science fantasy setting. And uh, I do recommend that... Um, um, Endings should agree with the story. And just like in Mass Effect 3, your arc, your personal arc, has nothing to do with what ending you choose, and it's the same here. Uh, none of the endings are tightly tied to Aaliyah's personal questions, because she doesn't really have any. She's largely just a blank, um, a blank character for you to project onto. She has some minor character traits, but she doesn't have a personal story. So, uh, I don't know how many more of these episodes we're going to do. Uh, feel free to let me know if you want me to go through the whole thing again. Um, there are things I can talk about. For example, if you are nice to... Um, uh, What's-her-face back on Iox, the lady who's ordering me around. If you're nice to her, then apparently you can learn a little bit more about certain things. Like, the robots think that they invented... Um, the concept of a loop in order to cement their own power and reduce the power of um, of the humans, you know, reassure them and stuff like that. Uh, that would make sense because the robots are the only ones that would really know anything about the vault and the loop. But it's also not very, I mean, it's kind of just like a hand wavy, push that aside sort of thing rather than a, an answer that for, furthers our story or our theme at all. So... That's kind of the sort of thing I've been thinking about, whether or not it's worth going forward, because it's mostly... Uh, I thought that maybe I'd go through it again to see whether or not I could get the, the timing on the story beats to line up so that we would have the contiguous themes. And sweet. But as far as I can tell, you can't do that. There is literally no way to make the themes work out and sync up because they were never written to be able to do that. Even if you play them ideally, they're not able to do that. Uh, so that's, eh, it's kind of what I expected. Um, it's a, uh, it's a situation where the, the constraints of the engine and their approach to writing this and their, their, uh, historical approach to writing their other games have all collided to be, um, to, to kind of cripple their ability to make the story flow. Uh, and I know that I've been talking a lot about, you know, we can do a, we can do a, a context engine, and that'll help them make the story flow if we can get the context engine's tools to work. But continuing to go through the game and just say that over and over and over doesn't seem like a good good way to spend anybody's day. So I will probably leave this as the last episode, unless some of you really want to see more. Um, But uh, this is not the end of the story of Heaven's Vault, because I am going to be talking or creating some context engines. Uh, I know that I'm going to have to create at least two. One for the game I'm, I'm working with, which is a, um, a very limited context engine that's specifically built to do one thing. And then I'll also have to create one that's built for RPGs, because one of them is built for linear adventures that are randomly generated, Sort of like 80 days, I guess. And then the other one will have to be built for uh, something that's non-linear but more pre-scripted. Uh, and they both have their own difficulties. They both require slightly different approaches on how to weave the contexts together. Which I can do videos about, but there's no reason to do videos about it while playing Heaven's Vault. Um, feel free to talk about whatever you want to talk about down below. 
Um, and I think that what we're going to do is we're going to call it here. So uh, thank you for watching my, what is it, 44 episodes, 43 episodes of Heaven's Vault. I'll chime in with some additional videos that won't be set in heaven, Heaven's Vault, but they will be about context engines and inspired by this context engine, which I think is a great first step towards a new kind of way to weave stories together in video games. Have a nice one, everybody.